good morning all today we are going to study the topic reluctance of air gap air gap is defined as the clearance between the stator and rotor portion of a motor it can also said to be a free open space physically separating the stator and rotor portion of a motor generally the iron surfaces around the air gap are not smooth Hence, their amount of calculation by normal methods gives wrong results. Unsmooth surfaces are occurring around the air gap due to the following facts. These are the three facts which are responsible for the unsmooth surfaces around the air gap. First one is slotting. That is, uh, one or both of the iron surfaces around the air gap may be slotted. that is both stator and rotor surfaces will be slotted due to the slotting the magnetic flux have a tendency to concentrate on the tooth rather than distributing itself uniformly over the air gap next fact is radial ventilating ducts these are actually provided for the cooling purposes radial ventilating ducts are actually small gaps uh, provided in between the stacks of armature core due to the presence of radial ventilating ducts also the flux distribution is not uniform in the air gap third fact is salient pole machines you have studied about salient pole machines in synchronous generators in salient pole machine the air gap dimensions are not smooth or not constant over the whole pole pitch due to all these parameters or due to all these factors the air gap around the sorry the flux around the air gap is not uniformly distributed we will be considering each one of this fact in detail and we will be obtaining the reluctance for each case from there we will be able to calculate the mm for air gap which gives the correct results certain representations which will be using for today's complete video session is indicated here l is actually mean for length of core l suffix g that is actually the air gap length os is slot pitch slot pitch is defined as center to center distance between the two slots ws is actually the width of slot and wt is actually the width of tooth first we are going to consider the armature surface as a smooth one the smooth armature surface is possible only if the slots are closed ones in this figure indicates the closed slots in the next slide in this figure this represents the open slots which you are quite familiar with in your previous uh, machines classes so if you see in this diagram this portion that is a uh, the portion above this line indicates the stator portion and the portion below this line indicates the rotor portion the slots on the rotor is actually closed ones not open slots this is actually the clearance between the stator and rotor which is represented as air gap this continuous lines from stator to rotor indicates the flux distribution os is actually the distance between or center to center distance between these two slots that is represented as os and this is the air gap and its uh, distance is lg or length of air gap is indicated as lg this diagram is the stretched version of front cross sectional view of a machine since the surface is smooth the flux is uniformly spread over the entire slot pitch as you are aware about the standard relation of reluctance that is s is equal to l by nu a the same relation we will be using here also for calculation of reluctance of air gap in the smooth armature we have to calculate the cross section area of the magnetic path this is actually the magnetic path that is from the stator towards the rotor so its cross sectional area will be actually a rectangle and the rectangle's shape is like this 
as I am moving the cursor this will be how the cross-sectional area of the magnetic path it is basically a rectangle and the rectangle will be having width OS and its length will be the whole length of the core hence this rectangles area or the cross-sectional area will be L into OS so substituting the values in the standard relation of reluctance instead of L we will be substituting LG and instead of area we will be substituting L into OS so this is the relation for reluctance of air gap if the armature is smooth getting a clear idea of the reluctance of air gap with smooth armature we are moving to find the reluctance of air gap with open slots here also if you are seeing the slotting is provided only on one side that is only the rotor side is actually slotted the stator side is still smooth if you see here the flux will flow through only the tooth portion in the air gap that is literally I can say the flux path is confined to the width of the slot in the previous case it was not like that the flux was uniformly distributed over the slot pitch but in the current case over the slot pitch the flux is not uniformly distributed the flux is actually confined only to the tooth portion or the width of the tooth so while finding the cross-sectional area of the magnetic flux path just like in the previous case here the rectangle size will be reduced it will be like this and towards the back side that is uh, towards the whole length of the core so for finding the cross-sectional area of this magnetic flux path you don't have to multiply this whole slot pitch into the length of core instead you have to just multiply this width of tooth into the length of core this is actually a slot and uh, here WS is indicating the overall width of this slot and uh, overall width of this slot is also represented here as WS and the width of tooth is indicated as WT so instead of WT you can also write it as OS minus WS by 2 minus WS by 2 that is OS minus WS so in a machine with open armature slot the effective slot pitch can be written as OS dash is equal to WT is equal to OS minus WS so while calculating the cross-sectional area instead of WT you can indicate it as OS dash so the whole relation can be written as LG divided by nu 0 L into OS minus WS from this relation it is very clear that uh, the magnitude of reluctance has been increased comparing with that of a smooth surface one as we have seen before next we are going to study the case of open slots again but the difference is in the previous slide fringing was not taken into consideration but in this case fringing is also taken into consideration actually in open slots the flux won't be confined to tooth portion alone in addition the flux would fringe around the tooth that is being shown here see the portion where I am moving the cursor due to this fringing the overall cross-sectional area of the flex path has been increased comparing with that of the previous case so now let's calculate the cross-sectional area while considering the fringing effect also in the cross-sectional area the term length remains the same only difference is in the term OS so the new OS will be represented as OS dash or the effective slot pitch is indicated as OS dash it is equal to WT width of tooth plus a portion a small portion of width of slot has been also occupied so we can write it as uh, WT plus delta WS 
adding and subtracting ws to this relation there is a wt plus ws plus delta ws minus ws wt plus ws indicates the slot pitch that is actually this is the width of tooth wt and this much half will be ws by 2 and this much half also will be ws by 2 so wt plus ws by 2 plus ws by 2 is actually the slot pitch os so i can write os is equal to wt plus ws so making the substitution here instead of wt plus ws i am representing it by os so the relation gets modified into os minus 1 minus del ws this 1 minus del is indicated as kcs which is termed as a coefficient that is carter's gap coefficient for slots in the previous case as we have considered it has open slots one the fringing effect was not taken into consideration but in this case we have taken the fringing effect also into consideration so comparing with the previous case the effective slot pitch has been increased i am not saying that the slot pitch has been increased i am saying the effective slot pitch that is the term os dash has been increased in the previous case the value of os dash was same as that of the width of tooth that is wt it will be better if you draw this diagram and make a note of all these relations along with the session in the next slide we are going to study about how to find the value of this carter's gap coefficient for slots this carter's gap coefficient for slots that is kcs this s represents its for slots and k C, C represents that it's the uh, Carter's coefficient. So it's actually depending upon a ratio that is uh, length of air gap by width of slot, LG by WS. And their empirical formulas are represented here. KCS is equal to 1 by 1 plus 5 LG by WS. One more relation is there. That is KCS is equal to 2 by pi tan inverse Y minus 1 by pi log square root of 1 plus y square where this y is indicated by ws by 2 lg generally in problems this coefficient's value will be given if it's not given you must substitute for lg and ws the values which are given in the problem in this relation and you have to calculate the value of kcs so the reluctance of air gap with slotted armature considering the fringing effect will be LG divided by nu0 OS dash into L where this OS dash is indicated as OS minus KCS into WS. This graph actually indicating the different values of Carter's coefficient for different ratios that too for different cases one is open slots and the other one is semi closed slots now let's see the definition of gap contraction factor for slots it is actually defined as the ratio of reluctance of air gap in machine with open armature slot to the reluctance of air gap in machine with smooth armature as we have already learned the reluctance of air gap in machine with smooth armature is LG by nu0 L into OS and with a slotted armature is LG divided by nu0 L OS minus KCS into WS so while dividing this relation with the reluctance of smooth armature or you have to multiply it with the inverse of the reluctance of smooth armature so this LG and uh, the LG over there will get cancelled new zero term and L also will get cancelled so what you are left with is OS divided by OS minus KCS into WS so this is the relation for gap contraction factor for slots you must know this relations then only you will be able to crack the problems so KGS is actually the gap contraction factor for slots don't get confused with the KCS KCS is actually representing the Carter's coefficient for slots and uh, KGS is gap contraction factor for slots
So far we have studied the effect of slotting on the reluctance of air gap. Next we are going to study about the effect of ventilation ducts on the reluctance of air gap. For understanding this we have taken the side cross sectional view of the machine. This is actually the side cross sectional view of the machine. Ventilating ducts is actually the small gaps in between the stacks of armature. This is actually the armature stack. This is the another armature stack and this is the another armature stack. So in between this armature stacks there is small gaps and this small gaps is said to be the radial ventilating ducts. It is actually provided for the purpose of ventilation or cooling purposes. This cooling ducts results in contraction of flux in the axial direction. You will be able to see here which leads to a reduced effective axial length. In the previous cases, the axial length was intact, that is they remained the same. But if you are considering here, the effective axial length has been reduced, which leads to increased in the reluctance of air gap. So the effective axial length is indicated as L dash. L dash is equal to L minus KCD ND WD. ND represents the number of radial ventilating ducts and WD indicates the width of each ventilating duct. KCD is just like KCS that is Carter's coefficient for ducts. You can calculate the value of KCD by using the same empirical formula which you have studied in the case of KCS. Only difference is instead of WS it will be coming here as WD. So the standard relation for KCD is 1 by 1 plus 5 LG by WD. Now you must know the definition of gap contraction factor for ducts. In the previous case we have studied about gap contraction factor for slots which was represented by KGS. Now gap contraction factor for ducts is indicated as KGD. It is actually defined as the ratio of reluctance of air gap with radial ducts to the reluctance of air gap with smooth armature or without radial ducts. Reluctance of armature, sorry, reluctance of air gap with radial ducts is actually represented as LG by nu0 L dash into OS. OS remains the same. The only difference which came is in the term L. Instead of L, we will be substituting here L dash. So the reluctance of air gap with radial ducts is LG divided by nu0 L dash OS. That relation is not mentioned here. And the reluctance of air gap without radial duct you are familiar. That is in the case of a smooth armature. That is uh, LG divided by nu0 L OS. So you have to find the ratio of this two. So while calculating the ratio of this two, all the terms get cancelled except L and L dash. So you will be able to find the relation for gap contraction for ducts as L by L dash. Instead of L dash you can write it as L minus KCD ND WD. See the confusing factor over here is you are studying so many constants. Now itself you have studied four constants. That is KCS, KCD, KGS, KGD. Don't get confused with any of this. Next we are going to consider the case of a machine having slotted armature and radial ventilating ducts. Considering the effect of both this we are going to calculate the value of gap contraction factor. So in this case it is defined as the ratio of reluctance of air gap with open armature and radial ducts to the reluctance of air gap with smooth armature and no radial ducts. So you have to substitute the values of reluctance here. So reluctance of air gap with open armature and radial ducts is LG divided by nu0 L dash into OS dash. And the case of smooth armature and without any radial ducts is LG divided by nu0 L OS. So this nu0 terms and uh, 
LG terms gets cancelled and you will be getting the expression as OS by OS dash into L by L dash. OS by OS dash is actually the gap contraction factor for slots and L by L dash is actually the gap contraction factor for ducts. So this total gap contraction factor is actually the product of gap contraction factor for slots and the gap contraction factor for ducts. So you must know this relation also kg is actually the product of kgs and kgd. Next is that for an induction motor. In the construction of induction motor you have studied both the stator as well as the rotors are slotted. Hence the gap contraction factors has to be calculated for both stator and rotor. In this case gap contraction factor for stator side is indicated as kg ss and for rotor side is indicated as kg sr that is kg ss is gap contraction factor for status loads kg sr is gap contraction factor for rotor loads before we have mentioned ws for the width of slot here we are having two terms that is wos and uh, wor wos represents the width of stator slot and WR represents the width of rotor slot. Since there are two gap contraction factors for stator side as well as rotor side definitely there will be two Carter's coefficient terms also that two for rotor side and stator side. So in the case of stator side the Carter's coefficient can be defined as 1 by 1 plus 5 LG divided by WOS instead of WS we will be representing it as WOS. Similarly in the case of uh, uh, rotor side we will be indicating the Carter's coefficient as KCSR that is equal to 1 by 1 plus 5 LG by WOR. Now the expression for gap contraction for status loads is given here that is OS S divided by YSS minus KCSS WOS. Before this relation was OS divided by OS minus KCS WS. That was the case when the slotting was only on the armature side. But in this case slotting is provided both on armature side as well as on the stator side. So we have to find this gap contraction factor for both stator as well as for rotor. So in the case of rotor the gap contraction factor is the same relation. Only difference is uh, instead of S, R will be coming here in all these terms. To write the relation for stator slot pitch and rotor slot pitch, we will be considering the stator and rotor as two circumscribing circles. Stator as the outer one and the rotor as the inner one. And the length of gap between these two is actually the length of air gap LG. So I can write stator slot pitch as stator inner diameter divided by number of stator slots. Stator inner diameter is actually D and the number of stator slots is represented as SS. Similarly I can write rotor slot pitch as rotor outer diameter by number of rotor slots. This rotor outer diameter will be D minus 2 times LG because if you see to obtain the value of diameter of the inner circle you have to subtract the outer circle's diameter with two times length of air gap or diameter one then you will be able to obtain the derivation of OSR as D minus 2 LG divided by SR. With that we are concluding today's session. All the relations we have studied today are very important ones. All of you must know all these relations. Then only you will be able to solve, solve their corresponding problems. In the next class we will study about MM of air gap in machines. Thank you.